Um, okay, so my name is Ian Whiteside. Yes, I'm from, from F-Secure Corporation. I'm based in Helsinki. Uh, what I plan to do is tell you a little bit about myself, tell you a little bit about F-Secure, and maybe give you some hints and tips on the things that we are doing within F-Secure on different kinds of solutions. A little bit of an advertisement here. At, at the very end of the day, we have Mikko Hyppunen, one of our, be or our best speaker, uh, one of the 50 famous people on the internet. Please also check out what he has to say. I'm a sales guy, so I'll talk more from that aspect, and he talks about generalizations and things happening in the world. Any of you familiar with this, alphabet soup? I think this is the main thing we see. IT people in general, be it directors or security managers, is becoming more complex. We talk about things like <coughs> DLP, ransomware, yada yada yada. The, the alphabet soup and the terminology is becoming really, really overwhelming for people. Not to speak of the normal consumers. So we as IT security people, we make some kind of sense of this. Is this familiar? Yeah, we're a vendor, we're probably somewhere in here as well. There's thousands of vendors all throwing their solutions at you and trying to tell you this is the best way to do one thing or another. Well, yeah, it's true. I mean, we all have good solutions. But it's quite, again, confusing for the IT managers or the IT directors or normal people. There is good news in, in uh, or coming up. And the good news is that we see more consolidation of these companies. So venture capitalists have now maybe caught on that a lot of the small companies are pumping out the money and then getting out quickly and restarting companies. So we will see over the next few years consolidation of these companies to smaller groups. So, well, it's good and bad news for some people. Some people will go bankrupt and some people will be purchased. So I want to tell you about myself as well. So I'm working in IT security one way or another for over 15 years. Firstly with uh, firewalls and, and routers, and then later with WiMAX and Wi-Fi solutions, and now about 10 years with, with F-Secure. Mostly in pre-sales and sales positions. I've met thousands of people between Asia and Latin America. Everything basically I've worked outside of Finland in different countries. And I wanted to tell you a few stories or things that I hear. It's not sure of the timeline exactly, but one thing that reminds me over the years, my grandma. My grandma, an elderly lady, uh, was talking to a group of her elderly friends and explaining to them how I was in charge <coughs> of making sure the computers are not stolen. And I guess that's reasonable since I told her I was in computer security. So that was her concept of security. My seven-year-old daughter on the other side last week, she came to me and said, Daddy, we were looking at our mobile phones in school. And you know, there's thing called virus alarms. Okay, so I thought seven-year-old really understands about somehow protecting your mobile devices. A thing that most companies don't even bother to look at. They think mobile devices, that's not so important. And maybe one of the most ridiculous stories I've actually heard is a lady, you maybe heard similar things, a lady asking, can I be infected from my machine that has a virus that has affected my machine? Now, I'm not a doctor, probably that's quite hard to do, but I don't know, is it so far-fetched? Dick Cheney, the vice president of the US, some years back he, was, uh, he got a heart pump. That heart pump included a Wi-Fi access point so that the doctors and medical staff could actually program his heart to do different things so they don't have to open up his chest every time. So I guess in the future, who knows, maybe you can get a virus from a computer. I leave that as, as that. Other hobbies I have running, futsal, and I like red wine, but that's not really important for this presentation. A little bit about F-Secure. We're almost 30 years in the business, let's put it that way. Uh, I think viruses are only around for 29 years, if we put it that way, or malware. We have over 1,000 employees in, in 25 countries, about 170 million revenue headquarters in, in Helsinki, as I mentioned. Businesses. Consumers and, and operators are, are partners. We have an ecosystem of partners. But what is more interesting about this whole slide, rather than numbers and the mumbo jumbo, is that we've actually participated in more cyber security crime scenes than any other European country or company. And I'll come back why that is important in a little while. Some of the things that we've seen. So if we talk about IoT, I guess probably you've heard lots of presentations here about IoT. But IoT does continue to be one of the biggest risks we see 
Uh, going back some months, we had the DDoS attacks against Krebs when he doxed a group of punks. Um, and we actually recently released a product called F-Secure Sense, which was addressing IoT for home users at the consumer. But we will see more. We need to address IoT devices for hard machines and for different industrial um, components. And the approach for that is very different than endpoint. You can't quarantine a heart rate monitor. So we'll see how that develops. Digitalization, so companies are already going one way or another into digitalization. We see fast acceleration, be it online shopping, so forth. It's all there. Regulations, there's about a million presentations here about GDPR and breach management and all that. I'm not even going to talk about it, but it's something we all need to, I guess, address. For me, working in international market sanctions, uh, there are certain companies, certain people within Russia, for example, within Iran, who we cannot sell to. So these all affect the landscape. The one thing we do have noticed is also this business side, the acceleration B2B security business. So we see a lot more investment into that. Um, and the interesting thing about that investment goes back again now to the alphabet soup. Companies are not able to cope with the needs, so the IT managers are looking now for services. They're looking for assistance on ways to protect their environment in a better way. Budgets are changing, so yes, we're an endpoint vendor for very many years. Uh, that's our core, that's one of our core products. I'll tell you a little bit what else we do. But budgets are changing from that to solutions like rapid detection and response. We also see consumers, we've really scared them, it seems, so all the newspapers and the news, consumers are becoming more and more knowledgeable about the hacks out there. But 90% of them still use free solutions. So we go back to the story is there's no such thing as free lunch. Cloud, fast acceleration from on-premises to cloud solutions, solutions like Salesforce, Office 365, OneDrive, Amazon, Huge acceleration in, in, in that part. Companies are moving there. Somewhere down. Let me just cut that one second. This is Mr. Hobbs. This is a marketing video, but this gives you a little bit of a view on some of the pressures that IT managers can have. Somewhere data breaches and phishing emails kept IT director Wilson Hobbs awake at night. For Wilson knew that the cybersecurity of any company is only as strong as its weakest link. What's my password? And in Wilson's company, there were a lot of weak links. If there was a password to leak and a porn site to serve, Wilson knew his co-workers would be on it. Wilson, laptop, problems. This led to an insurmountable amount of work for Wilson. Wilson. What is this? As the tasks piled on his desk, Wilson started to feel unconfident in his ability to do the actual work he was hired to do. Wilson. Did you get that cybersecurity report done? He dreamed of a cybersecurity system with real-time threat analysis, artificial intelligence, and machine learning that would be easy to manage. And one day, Wilson's dream came true. Yeah! Yeah, taking it down, taking it down. Finally, Wilson felt that he got credited for a job well done. And that's cybersecurity 101. He regained his confidence and had the time to connect with his peers around him. She said, no, I mean your physical address. Wilson felt like together they could achieve great things, both as a company, maybe even as friends. And one. Protection service for business doesn't take care of human error. It just prevents the harm that error may cause to your business. That was Ivan. I don't know any IT managers here who, who Feel this? Okay, this was an advertisement for one of our solutions, but the idea is there anyway. That it's, it's quite stressful on how you do all this. It's a complex world and, and ways to do that. So hopefully I'll go through this and show you maybe some solutions and some tip, tips and tricks maybe to make your life easier. Some statistics. So 63% of data breaches are still caused by weak passwords or stolen passwords. It's a quite a high number, and that's actually one of the reasons we also are building into our solutions password management solutions. 80% of breaches are also caused by not patching your systems. So quite often we focus on patching the Windows system, but we forget about the Autobiz and the browsers and all the applications around that. Another reason why we include patch management in all our solutions. 
33% of attacks are non-malware, so lateral movement and different kinds of admin um, ways of coming with normal tools. And I'll come back to this a little bit. 200% increase on attacks on mobile devices or mobile phones. So I guess my daughter might be right. There is a reason to have a virus alarm on our phones. So this is a weak point what I see. Companies don't focus on this. 744% increase in, in malware for Macs. So those who think they're safe with a Mac, days are changing. Percentages are a bit, obviously, it, it, they started with a low number, so, but we do see now huge increase, and that's changing. 752% in, in ransomware family increase, and I'm not going to talk any more about that. I only have one, some words of comfort. If you have seen <coughs> ransomware, you're not alone. That's all I can say. So let me tell you a story about chess, or two games of chess, and man and machine. And it's an important part of how we do things at, at F-Secure as well. For those who are a little bit older, you maybe remember Deep Blue. Deep Blue was back in 1997. It beat the first machine to beat a grandmaster at chess. And that time we thought, okay, this is now the time of computer domination. Computers will take over machine learning and all that fancy words. That's what we talked about. This movie, Terminator, this was actually made in 1991. So a little bit before Deep Blue beat the Grandmaster. But I don't know, okay, we do have machine learning, all those things, but 20 plus years on, I think I can only relate to the iPad and the iPhone. Let me tell you about a story about another chess game. This time the chess game was an open session. So you could enter the competition, man against machine, machine against machine, machine and man as ally and as partner. Now, what happened, of course, was a grandmaster with a weak laptop was able to beat a supercomputer to come in third place. But the most remarkable thing, actually, was first and second place. Two amateur chess players with three weak laptops were able to beat a supercomputer with the most processing power and a grandmaster. And there's a lot of theories about this and what they call it, the symbiosis theory between man and machine. And you can go and listen to lots of podcasts and webinars about that. I'm not going to go into detail. But the point, this was an amazing feat. And this is something at the FSECUR we do a lot, merging man and machine. And this is how we're trying to make the technology work in a better way. So in the first slide I mentioned about the consultants and the cyber crime that we do uh, or investigate, the guys do that. So what we do is, from real world cyber crime investigation, we take that information and we feed it to what we call the live security cloud. We have also 30 years experience within our labs. Same thing, those guys feed that information into the live security cloud. Then we have technology machines who are collecting with different sensors, millions of sensors without the word, blocking malware and different kinds of applications. That is all sent to the live security cloud. The live security cloud has all those nice things you talk about, big analytics, machine learning, but it also has human. So what we try to do with all the solutions is, or we don't try, we do it, is we have a mix, a symbiosis between man and machine. Meet Ivan. Ivan is the best F-Secure partner ever. Ivan's, well, I'm going to go through Ivan's day. So Ivan wakes up, or well, I guess he wakes <coughs> up a bit early, but at 9.03, Ivan comes into the office. He sees his vulnerability scanning management platform has told him about a server that has suddenly come up that has absolutely no security on it. So he quickly checks around his environment and he discovers that marketing has actually brought up a test server. So, of course, Ivan then brings down that test server very quickly. A little bit later, 11.21, he's on the web surfing. He noticed that Adobe has some vulnerability, uh, luckily enough, there's a patch has been actually already available. Lucky he's a great f customer, so he has the patch management, which I mentioned as well. So he doesn't need to do anything, it's already patched for him. I guess Ivan got just back from lunch and he gets an email from his best buddy, which has a macro, and, and macros are back, I guess we've been talking about last year, macros are back again. He idiotically tries to, to open this and his 
better than next generation endpoint then blocks the attack, the ransomware attack. He notifies his friend who then actually says, I didn't send that email. And at the same time, he tells his company about the email. So after that, Ivan thinks, okay, I'm going online now. I'm going to my Salesforce community where he's been waiting for an offer for his next generation thingy-me-bob. Uh, as he logs on to his Salesforce community, he notices that the attachment has actually been blocked. f Cloud Protection for, sales block, uh, for Salesforce has actually blocked the attachment before it even gets anywhere near his environment. But now you've guessed it's not going to be a good day for Ivan, right? So, so Ivan gets a call from the Rapid Detection Service team of f -Secure. And the rapid detection servers tell him that there is some lateral movement within the network and we have <coughs> identified an attack within your infrastructure. They give him instructions how to contain it and then Ivan successfully does so. I think it's almost the end of the day for work but Ivan thinks he cannot get to sleep so actually he cost calls his best buddies again at F-Secure for incident response and the incident response guys come on site to learn from what has happened during the day so that he can better know his attack surface for the future. Anyone have a day like Ivan ever? This gives you a, the wheel of a really bad day. But I want to look at each of these solutions a little bit in more detail. So we talk about hardening your attack surface. And this is something that a lot of companies don't do, a lot of people forget to do. Most of the breaches are coming from vulnerabilities. So you need to have what we call insight. You need to understand your attack vector. Commonly, you may not know what cameras, what servers, what IP devices are even in your infrastructure. If we think about that, I meet a lot of people. Here's one more tip. Uh, hopefully none of you do this. And they say, I order this pen test once a year or twice a year even if it's a really good year. Every 90 minutes, there's a new vulnerability. And every 15 days, on average, one of those vulnerabilities is exploited. So if you do a vulnerability scan once per year or twice per year, it's not going to happen. You're going to be uh, breached very soon. So I definitely recommend you think about a solution, be it from whatever vendor, that gives you a clear view of your attack surface. So what's the problem? We as IT people, we've spent years building our infrastructure. We put a firewall, a next-gen this, and next-gen that, IDS, and we build this huge, like, wall after wall of defenses. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is we don't actually know what we're, we're kind of protecting ourselves from. So, as I mentioned, vulnerability management, also red teaming, is, is the other way to do it. Um, we don't understand what to protect. At the same time, the guys are becoming very, very sophisticated. So remember, they only need one opportunity to put a foothold on your network. If you're doing defense only, you need to succeed 100% of the time to defend. That's quite bad odds, <coughs> in my opinion. Business environments are coming quite complex. So we'll talk a little bit in a moment about cloud as well. I don't know if any of you have moved to the cloud, but cloud is a little bit different from a security point of view. And then shadow IT is the other part of it. We see a lot of people bringing up servers or putting in IP cameras that IT actually has no clue about. So radar, as I said, it's a turnkey solution that we have. Basically, it discovers your network assets. It does a system scan on, on devices, on applications, on web applications, and it also reports those for you. So for those of you who have been listening to the GDPR things, it, it is also a tool that helps you with your GDPR compliance as well. So something that we've been talking for 30 years and something that's not so exciting for a lot of people, but something that is still the core of, of your security solution, that's endpoint. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. For those of you know, who know me or you know F-Secure, you hear us talking always about the endpoint. Maybe a couple of main things that we built patch management into the endpoint solutions. Uh, password protection as well is one part of it. And then if you remember our cloud, the man and machine, here it's seen as a security cloud. And the same thing in radar. 
the man and machine is always present one way or another throughout all of the solutions. To kind of, well, wrap the end point, by the way, we talk about AV test always. So over the last six years, we've won five out of six awards. And then um, over the last years as well, they do a monthly review, and we always score six out of six. That is not a or that is not uh, that you will be 100% protected, but it's just to show the consistency. Something a bit newer, cloud is king. So Gartner say 20.1% will be the increase of cloud solutions this year. 64% of them say that they will move more cloud to more cloud solutions within the eight, next 18 months. And I said, we see this happening all the time. There's a concept in cloud called shared responsibility model. Uh, at least with most of the cloud providers. And I'm just going to specifically speak about Salesforce, who we have a cooperation with. And what we mean by that is Salesforce has spent billions of dollars making it the most secure and private infrastructure in the world. But in the shared responsibility model, you, the user, are responsible for the content, security, and the identity and access management. And this is something a lot of people forget about. So as I said, as a premium service, we've cooperated now with, <coughs> with uh, Salesforce to bring F-Secure Cloud Protection, which is doing analytics, it's also doing sandboxing, it's doing uh, auditing and reporting, and that's a, that's a premium service on top of the Salesforce. So where's the problem? And, and this is generic for all cloud solutions, even though now we talk about Salesforce. You cannot secure external content. Collaboration platforms, all of these have external people uploading files, downloading files, or other content. You cannot know what kind of security they have behind them. The other one is cloud introduces a new vector. And that new vector is, as I said, we build our infrastructure in layers. We built the firewall, we built service layer security, server security, endpoint security. When you go to the cloud, you bypass some of that. So what we've done with the cloud protection and, and the idea of cloud protection is also to evolve that product to other solutions is we reintroduce that uh, level of protection so that you have a layered approach. The main vectors, direct attacks, so maybe someone <coughs> stealing your identity going on to the internet and um, or going to the Salesforce cloud, putting malicious content there. That's one of the vectors. But the most probably dangerous vector is where people start to share malicious content within a partner portal or a community or that kind, because you cannot control that. Salesforce, it's, there's no middleware, no servers. It's built into the Salesforce infrastructure and it's up and running in minutes and it's created with Salesforce. So I'm running out of time, I just jump to the last thing. Who has been breached? Anyone want to say? Because there is only two kinds of companies, those that have been breached and those that don't know it. And this is the fundamental standpoint where we, we kind of see it today. No one admits, by the way, ever that, yeah, I've been breached, of course. Um, but there is a challenge in this. The challenge is lack of resources. So going back to these IT managers I seen, showed you earlier who were quite stressed out. Lack of resources, lack of competence. Very hard to find skilled security people. Return of investment, so building up, starting from a CM system to a SOC and building that can cost millions of dollars and take years to get there. So what we've kind of tried to do is introduce a concept called uh, RDS or Rapid Detection Service where we take the best of two worlds. It's a fully managed service that you can have up and running in just a few moments. And the idea, again, you guessed it, man and machine working together. It's always going to be there. Attacker comes into the network. The network infrastructure will have hardened sensors. It will also have honeypots. And it will have network analyzers. Those devices are collecting always all the data what is happening within the infrastructure, so we have a clear view of what happens. Those are run uh, through our real-time cloud again with uh, big analytics and so forth. And if anything anomalies stand out, then we always alarm those. And we have a rapid detection service who will call you within 30 minutes. So basically the promise is 
any kind of breach, within 30 minutes you will get a notification of what is happening within your network infrastructure. So, let me wrap up with one more thing. So I talked about red teaming. So if nothing else out of this, please focus on understanding your attack surface before you go to all us vendors and buy all these boxes of next gen and this. Understand what you're trying to protect yourself against. And this is a little marketing video around red teaming. And then <coughs> I'll wrap up with that. Hey, you got a minute? What's up? I got the data on this attack. How bad? It's bad. I mean, these guys were pros. Well, how'd they get in? I mean, using pretty much every trick in the book. Phishing emails, for starters. I mean, Jessica and Duncan gave up their passwords on the first try. And Clark and Christina were next. They got about 60% of our staff, basically. I mean, to be fair, the phishing site looked extremely legit. This is not good. Yeah, well, that's not even the half of it. It looks like they scouted the building last Tuesday. They were war driving, looking for any wireless access points. And then they pretty much just walked right in. They cloned an ID badge, they somehow got a key code, and then from that point it was easy. They stuck a rogue wireless point in a meeting room. And then they broke into the server closet and installed a sniffer on the network. They even planted key loggers on people's PCs. It's a device that you can record anything an employee types in. They got logins, passwords. Oh, for Pete's sake. They also bug three meeting rooms, and there's one in here. All right, so what's the damage? They got 2,000 customer accounts, okay? All of our board minutes, the HR server, product roadmaps. They even got into our social media accounts because the password was password. Shoot me. Yeah, well, like I said, these guys were pros. <laughs> well, thank God they were working for us. Thank you.